in the months and really that first year post disaster, there's a lot of energy. The helpers come, um, the, um, you know, those who can give do, and there's a lot of energy that's spread around, like, let's do some good. But in the absence of real data, we have great organizations with strong leadership and uh, tremendous heart and drive that want to do good, but without the direction on where to place that good. And I would argue that in the absence of a true, inclusive, accessible, holistic assessment of community needs, there's time wasted, there's resources wasted. Um, we also know that in the absence of that data, we can't capture dollars. I mean, this is a huge deal, uh, certainly for SBP, but what we have post-disaster is we have government through FEMA putting some price tag on what they think it will take for residents um, and our neighbors to recover. Um, but understanding that even the FEMA's own assessment process is not, um, uh, does not reach everyone and is at times not fully inclusive and certainly does not represent some of the more nuanced needs of a community. There's a balance. There's a balance of need that goes unrecognized and ultimately, um, can create a vacuum where there's or there's simply just not the funding, um, even if even if the funding were uh, available and something we could reach to. In the absence of that data, we don't know what to ask for. Um, for groups like SBP, the data is the thing that helps us raise money. Um, there needs to be a dialogue. And I think all too often in an assessment process, what we see is kind of this pre-baked, this is what we think people might need support with. And so let's ask them if they wanna check this box to say, I have this need. Without um, asking kind of the second and third question and without creating that dialogue, our intervention and our support may not actually hit the mark. And so I'll give a couple of examples here of what I mean. So. In New Orleans, um, and in, specifically in the Lower Ninth Ward, um, post Katrina, we, uh, the, the community, New Orleans and, and, and uh, recovery groups knew that there was a deep need for uh, owner occupied housing to be rebuilt in the Lower Ninth Ward. Um, a group with great intentions and sort of aspirational spirit took it upon themselves to really wrap their arms around the Lower Ninth Ward and build these like really beautiful units. Um, they were, and this was in, gosh, I mean, 2009 or 2010, so quite a while ago. But these were units that had solar panels um, that were energy efficient, um, that were fortified and built well. And, and, and really um, what I think uh, this, certainly this group believed to be a better product and a better home than what residents of the Lower Ninth Ward had experienced for decades. Unfortunately, uh, what this group heard was we need homes. And so they did just that, they provided homes. But without maintaining dialogue, conversation, and really an inclusive approach, they missed um, an understanding of what home meant to the residents of the Lower Ninth Ward. And so a real simple design um, decision ultimately changed the fabric of Lower Ninth Ward. So pre-Katrina, you had row houses where the front porches lined up one next to another. So families and neighbors could come out and talk to one another on the porch and it created this, this community. The way that these new homes were designed, um, they were scattered kind of lot by lot and the front porches no longer lined up. And this was uh, challenging for the community. Um, they no longer had that sort of like common ground where they could walk outside and kind of meet with their neighbor. And that like simple change, while relatively insignificant and certainly, you know, like not, a, not cost prohibitive, that approach changed how those families that had lived there for decades, how they experienced coming home, simply because what this group heard was they need homes and then had this kind of idealistic, like, this is what people will want. They'll want energy efficiency and solar panels and, and all this stuff, instead of really opening the discussion on what's going to support that deep kind of um, emotional healing and make practical sense for how folks live. There needs to be some central coordination. 
Um, the most challenging part is when we have a variety of organizations approaching the same residents three, four, five times saying, what do you need? Do you need this? Do you need that? It's exhausting to the resident um, and it silos the data. And so while without understanding ultimately where we go from here, I would strongly advocate that whether it's through a central agency or through a coalition, that there is some central coordination. It can be a committee, um, but with that coordination, the results and the data needs to be accessible. Individual assistance provides temporary housing, clothing, and minimal um, home repairs. Um, and helps to provide some resources for those immediate needs that come up. This can be a pain point um, in several communities that we've worked in and talking to clients and, and homeowners that have been affected by the disaster. We often hear that they there, there is an assumption or misperceptions that FEMA is meant to do more, that FEMA is meant to come in and rebuild their homes and they were expecting that support very early on. Um, so we you know, kind of like to share that uh, the the true meaning or true impact of FEMA is meant to address those immediate needs and that those CDBGDR funds, the community development block grant funds that are available down the road are what really will come in through programming to support those individual um, housing and repair needs to the full extent that they need to be. Um, after FEMA leaves, which is after the first 90 days after the disaster, there really is a huge gap until the next government program comes in through CDBGDR funding. So the, the community development block grant funding that comes in is what funds uh, the government programs um, that support the recovery efforts. So these are your, my, or your infrastructure repairs, your housing programs like rebuilding, buyout, and other assistance that becomes um, necessary for the affected uh, homeowner population. So in the meantime, um, there's you know two to four years between, between uh, FEMA and CDBGDR where um, what we say, you know, the nonprofits really take up that next leg of the relay race. 